How's it going? Good morning, everybody. Uh, oh, this is going to keep me up. But also, I've been really debating about what I want to say about this. I've been seeing this popular thing about Bro uh also known as the Brick Lady. And the controversy that she has been stirring up. There's been talks, ongoing dis talks and discussions about what happened, what she do, you know, the details, was it valid, was it legitimate, and I'll just, I'm just going to rifle off, I'm going to be ranting. Um, I seen a video about comedy hype. They were quick to take her side. They weren't trying to figure out the details. They weren't trying to... It was... Yeah, it was just really irritating because... For some reason, there's this notion... Maybe it's, it's here. Maybe it's in general for women. Maybe it's, it's for black... It's because she's a black female. But... We have this expectation... And I, I might just upload, because I had another thought. I, I had another video, actually, with this. And they keep having this discussion about who deserves protection. And so, just bare bones. A, if you're going to be a jerk about stuff, if, you, if, you're, if, you, if you're a lesbian who hates men, who is who is anti-social, which means you do stuff to push people away socially. You're you're distasteful. You're you're dishonest. You're unlikable. There's no way people are going to feel uh, an incentive to help you. That's the first thing. Another thing is there's this weird completion between uh, negative instances that involve. Uh, bad men who have no self-control and there is comparing that with a woman <clears throat> who incites violence upon herself and expects men to 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 lean on old values old traditional values that she herself are not adhering to and at the same time is practicing the antithesis of said values. So you can't expect people to to do things for you, to help you, to care. And you say, hey, I don't care about these same men that I expect help from. Another thing is for their own protection, especially in 2023, dudes are just protecting themselves a lot more. They're a lot more aware uh, there's, there's just a, a sentiment by women in general. They don't <clears throat> really desire or expect uh, any kind of assistance. Or or rather, there's a expected assistance, but there's not an expected sense of gratitude toward the, the views or decisions that men make in women's favor. And I don't like that. It's just, it's really... Is, I don't know what you'd call it, sociopathic, uh, transactional. It's a bunch of terms, but it's just not, like, right. <clears throat> Who are you to sit here and, and, and dump on men, but have expectations for men to take care of you, that uh, or to sit here and uh, beg men to be providers? But you can't really, you can't provide anything yourself. Like, me personally, that's why I'm not engaging in, like, a relationship right now. I don't have the equipment. I don't have the means to, to take care of a woman and stuff like that. But at the same time, I understand it. Like, I don't want somebody to punk me out or um, don't do their homework, do things on their side of the story, don't fix their traumatized life. I get so sick and tired of people using trauma as an excuse for bad behavior, for poor behavior. This woman has shown in previous videos how unlikable that she tends to be and make all of these terms 
and she feeds fire for conservatives to sit here and just blanket us with blame. She's like the type of person that people think we're all like, which is unruly, disagreeable, very combative. And it's so irritating because the unruliness that comes from this singular person, it just continues to make us look bad as a whole. The women from, um, I think her name is Tess or something, uh, from Comedy Hype, they had all this stuff. And the thing is, I'd protect the woman, the women that's on that show. Because I don't think they're women who would go out of their way to dishonor and disrespect a man just for no reason. I don't think they're the type of person to wild out and just uh, complain and blame all men and uh, be very angry and whiplash. Men have experienced rejection and women tend not to, you know, unless it's from a very small select group of men. And that's the times where they go out and they experience rejection. But the point, the point between all that is that uh, men, men know what rejection feels like and it hurts and it sucks. It doesn't justify a brick to the face. Another thing is, I don't think that's what happened. I think her storyline is unreasonable. And if that's the case, then sure, that dude should be uh, tried and persecuted for criminal behavior because that's irrational. That's a criminally violent offense, um, whatever. One of the things I can't stand from people from Comedy Hype, what they're doing, is that they're, they're suggesting that even if it was just the rejection, that um, the onus is on the man to walk away from her behavior. I don't believe it was as simple as she asking for his number. I've seen too many people who act like her, who say, I didn't do anything. When you actually dial it back, or if you've seen it, then you see these type of people the same types in black community just wild out. She just looks like those type of people who uh, they're hood rats. They 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 cause a lot of trouble. Um, for some reason, this stuff is normalized to them. Just blowing up on men and daring them to do something, and they they run into nine out of ten men who won't do anything. They'll take it on the chin and they'll go home disgruntled, getting upset because they know that she's taking advantage of a standard that it has antiquated um, gender roles. Men are not going to do anything, but there is that one out of 10 person that is going to do something, put their hands on them. And men just, they just, they wait for this woman to be humble. And it's not like a, a sadistic, kind of humbling is the fact that she's going out here off on the rails and challenging men knowing that the average man not even just them the average man has a stronger capability capability and most men will have, have practice self-control and will not put their hands on a woman myself included i'm not gonna put my hands on a woman even back then, I got beat up by a woman because I accidentally flung a rubber band at her. Felt really upset because that incited her to just beat, to put all her strength and keep hitting me. And it's just like, I've, I've experienced abuse from a woman. I've experienced emotional abuse. I've experienced physical abuse. It's not right. It's not right. They say, what, 15, 14% or 12%? of men experience abuse from women, but that's like double for uh, double by women to men, by, or by men to women. Like women experience about 33% of abuse and that's domestic while men have like, uh, I think it's like 14% or 12, excuse me. So, it's not as much, and I understand that. So I'm a minority of um, men who will experience that stuff. But women just, like, 
the average woman won't do crazy stuff like this. I think she is just tech, seeing new information about her. I think she's insane. I think... I, I don't know. I don't know what's her problem. You know, being Somali, I don't know. The only thing I know about Somalian is that they have a huge uh, connection with Arabs. They think they're Arab. They don't think they're black. Um, and even the Muslim, the, uh, the Arab population don't believe they're Arab. So that's the only thing I know about the Somalians. But I don't, I haven't, oh yeah, she says she's Muslim. So yeah, there's, there's a part of that because, you know, Muslim community, Ottoman Empire, Islam, they're all, they're all fairly connected. So, um, but apart from that, it's just, she's all, she, and apparently she's a lesbian, you know, she's queer. I don't know. I don't think that's the same thing because queer just means you're weird. It's an old word for weird. Um, but she did say, make a post about like loving women and stuff like that. And then women are the protectors. I've seen the video from that. Um, she had all these claims. And then whatever happened, now she's she's begging for men to... She Not even begging. She just had an expectation, just a sense of entitlement. Like, you men are supposed to go in my defense. And she's a single mother. And, you know, you check. She got GoFundies. You know, the past one that was like... 5,000. Now they say a new GoFundMe got 50,000. And they pretty much were about the same thing. Like, only this one had to be about a break. And the other one was like a, 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 a social issue. They thought she was cussing. And she said, no, I, was, I, I wasn't cussing. I was talking to Somali. And I was just taking care of a security person. I was just taking care of some folks that I think it, one old, a lady she was a Somalian. But I, I'm, I'm only mentioning they, they were like African folks. But I only mention this because people, they have a tendency to uh, speak mixed in their language. They speak, a, they speak a blended language of English in their own language. They blend it in there. So if she was inciting some sort of, she was really incited, she was really upset, I uh, guarantee you she's throwing F-bombs while she's speaking. Uh, I don't know Somali, but I'm pretty sure that's what happened. If you live in America you, and you, she seemed to speak um, pretty good English she and she knows about racism and she knows about all these big terms um even though to some of the stuff including like a a, a criticism at a uh, holiday inn I think or it was some sort of famous uh hotel thing um she just had a lot of extra words to say so she's pretty competent and also she's a doctorate student so it was just like, um, I think she's competent to use both languages interchangeably. So there's that. Another problem is just like, again, maybe she was you trying to do all this scheme and stuff to pay for college. Maybe that, that seems pretty plausible. But as far as I know, like, I only know Nigerians to be the most wealthy people, immigrants here in America. That might be different for you know, um, uh, Somali people, but, um, and that, and again, you know, when immigrants come here, they come here with high expectations and a high drive and a high work ethic. So, um, you know, it makes sense. She's a graduate student I mean, a doctorate student. She's trying to you know, get all her marks, but all this goofy stuff about her, she just, she had all his terms and I don't even think she was using them right. She was just a aggressor, aggressive person, very antagonizing and, uh, kept claiming people were being racist, kept, and a lady, in one of the videos, the lady was backing away because she was getting overwhelmed, you know, just reminds me in, in um, and one of my security jobs, not that I will back away, unfortunately, uh, you just deal with difficult people. So sometimes people will just get at you for simple instructions. Not Nobody's come at you personally. Nobody's trying to tell you, force your hand or, or put you in a wrist lock or nothing like that. They just got, they got a job to do, you know? And when you're on the other side, then it makes more sense. But when you are just a, the customer and you have all these expectations, you think it's personal and it's not personal. And, you know, she was suspected to be smoking. Uh, another thing, 
some of these same type of troublemaking people, they lie. They have no problem lying. And they, they like, lying comes out easily for them just as much as, like, formulating excuses. Now, maybe that's because she lived a hard life and she was forced to lie. I don't know in particular. But I don't think she's a truth teller myself because people don't stress out when they tell the truth, you know. And yes, you have a sense of indignancy when you do tell the truth. But I don't think this was the case. She was trying her best to try to, I don't know. I just don't have a lot of um, <clears throat> truth is for me when I hear people like this and they, they, they go on the offensive very fast. It's kind of like the Darbo effect, but uh, just manipulators, they, they go on the offensive very fast. They deflect, they don't take criticism, and they go on the offensive. Uh. So, um, my point at the end of all this, um, I don't trust her, you man. I even heard a video of she, I guess, an alleged friend said that she, oh, she's doing this again, you know, it's like she's bothered with, like she's been, she has a behavior, a pattern of doing stuff like this, similar things. It's tiring. I'm so tired of it. Black women do deserve to be respected and protected and cared for and loved, but not blindly. We're not going to, like, I hope this is a PSA for just women in general. Like, it's just like with this, um, with the gym culture, when women, they, they, uh, they're doing stuff, like they're working out and then they're, they, they're kind of struggling and they look at for dudes and dudes are not trying to talk to them. They're not trying to really be around them like that because, for uh, fear of being accused of being this this label or that label, uh, the men are also doing in the black community are doing something similar. They're like, for your shenanigans, we're not getting involved, and that's telling. If men have like, I don't like this stuff that some of these guys are they're they're going on a deep end, and they're just saying a bunch of relate brick related things. I don't really agree with all that. But what I don't like is people abusing your kindness. And this is like, this is basic, this is basic uh, kindness and respect and respecting your boundaries. No a random dude should not be out here trying to stick their neck out here. Like times have changed, chivalry has changed a also. Another thing, people just have a high expectation for people's kindness. There's not a sense of gratitude. I remember when I was taking care, when I was uh, doing certain functions for uh, these um, African folks, they were so grateful. They were so thankful, you know, and they, these were some ritzy uh, African folks, but they were very grateful for somebody opening the door for them. They were very nice people. Now, some of them weren't, but that's just to be expected in this space of like security work. But like, I was great. I was happy to hear that, you know. Because as a black person and people from the motherland, it's it's a it's a pride you get you have an instilled sense of pride when your own people are nice to you. You know, this is not a assumed game. Like society does work in a when society works well, then there's standards that everybody follows. Yes, you get protection. Yet but at the same time, we're expected to see um our counterparts treat us well, treat us nice, treat us with a baseline of respect. If we don't get that, then that's a that's kind of like a a symptom of a deeper problem. Nobody's gonna, no one's gonna be able to endure disrespect and still keep helping such a person. And outside of America, that is a bit more prevalent. When somebody start acting out and thinking, it's one thing to target a system that that is very unfair but it's another when uh i think i've just been talking for too long i'm sorry this 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 thing has just been kind of um every time i've seen content on it i just it just makes me think about what i've already said about it so i just and it's just new, more and more information. So whatever the truth is at the bottom of it, when people get down to the bottom of it, I, I hope and pray that this Ray Rose Shade lady is 
uh, that she if she was wrong that the do gets that she gets justice, but if she was in the wrong that uh, she gets she gets um, uh, I don't know some some corrective action some some counseling some therapy. People are we're like we need to heal. I know I know your average black woman is sensible, nice. They're po they're pretty light, pretty polite. They're they're regular people. But I don't believe that. I don't believe this brick woman Robache is is one of them. She's like one of the people who will take the black moniker, and will do whatever she wants with it. There's too many. There's there's villains in our community, and yes, it's like in every community. But like the villains in our community, and they're they're abusing our image. They are abusing our image terribly. So I just hope that we could come to a conclusion of just protecting our own, and even if that means protecting our own from ourselves. So, at the end of the day, that was weird. At the end of the day, um, I'm hoping for us to just grow as a people, but we gotta be smart. And we just have, I think, um, I'm running a little long. I'm just going to admit that. Um, but we got to understand, like, here's a mature small lesson. This is a mature lesson. Uh, we say that we're not a monolith. But that's partially untrue. Because there's common things that we all share. Common experiences, common beliefs as black people. Um, we all are individualists. But that's also partially untrue. Because... We all agree. We all have our own separate opinions about things, separate beliefs, uh, preferences, this, that, and the third. And and that's okay. In in its own respect, these both things can co coexist. We can have some things we all agree with, and we can have some things that we have separate, different beliefs about. And so, in that complexity, we have to fully engage uh, with being with this black experience that we share. And the same thing is in these tough conversations that involve problematic people that uh, we may take a side on, we have to figure it out given the maximum amount of information and on both sides. And this is, and we have to stop being so sensitive. Like we can't keep being, having raw nerves out here. And if we do, we have to respect some, the other person's side of the story. We all have opinions about it when it first happened. But then, okay, let's figure out what more is there to the story. You know, let, let's let's figure this out together. I think at the end of the day, this isn't about targeting black women. This is about figuring out if this individual person is right or wrong, considering the information. This isn't about leaning solely on your, your emotions. This is about seeing how bad she her face was seeing how bad this incident is and if there is justice that needs to be served is to deal with that accordingly but if there is deceit involved we figure that out and we take the ill we have to be an adult we have to be uh mature about these situations and move with grace and dignity we can't be children anymore if we're not, if you're not gonna do this for yourself, do this for the next generation. Because Gen Alpha, they're growing up. I ha I, I keep mentioning my feelings toward the Gen Zs and the Gen Z Alphas. These are young people, man. We used to be young people, and and the people before us. We have to be the grown ups now. We have to be the grown ups. We can't just sit here and be goofing off all the time and assuming, oh, I'm just young. No, we're not young anymore. We got to take on the mantle and do some 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 adult work, some adult digging, some real adulting out here. This is the best time to do it. 
So, um, that's it. That, that's it.